with the class so as uh, as what i have said uh, this morning since my internet connection was i uh, know was interrupted so instead i will just be uploading the lecture on module 3 the half i uh, know half part of module 3 will be uploaded and then the other half will be discussed next week module 3 is all about bpo engagements um, in this topic, we will be discussing the importance of having a contract before you enter into another business. So, um, yung kahalagahan ng pagkakaroon ng kontrata, the importance, yung uh, dapat alamin bago ka pumasok sa isa pang negosyo, diba? since outsourcing is contracting another business or third-party provider. That's the mere essence of outsourcing. You are dealing with another person or another group of ano, companies. So, dito makikita natin yung kahalagahan ng kontrata bago ka makipag-deal or bago ka makipag-negotiate or bago magsimula yung trabaho na gusto mong, sim na gusto mong ipatrabaho sa iba, there should be a formal contract between the two parties. So, am I protected? This is the common question. And this should be the most important question that you should ask yourself before you enter into a contract. How legal is the contract? Gano ba ito kaligal? Ito ba ay tama? Ito ba ay angkop sa gusto kong mangyari? And not just on your part, but also to the other's party. Okay? So, sabi dito, why is a business contract important? How does a contract protect your business? For a contract to be effective, what should be indicated in its terms and conditions? And therefore, when dealing with a contractor or service provider, how can you protect your business through a contract? So these are the most important or these are the most uh, um, common issues or the most important issues that you should be um, given, ano, Given the situation na makipag-enter ka into another contract, these are the most important matters or things that you should take into consideration before signing or before entering into a contract. Meron na naman kayong obligation in contract as far as I know. Uh, it was, ano, uh, you should have at least taken the, the, that subject last year or last semata. So, more or less familiar na kayo about sa importance ng pagkakaroon ng kontrata. Okay, so topic overview for this module is client-vendor relationship, attributes of BPO contract, BPO contract financials, and regulatory requirements. <clears throat> so, contract on the part of the client-service provider relationship. So, let's take a look what are those uh, relationship between the client and the service provider. So, in this situation, since tayo ay BPO, the client is the, is the company na nag-require or nag-hire doon sa service provider. Yung client, yun yung mother company na nagpagawa ng kanyang mga business transaction into another third-party company. Yun yung man yung service provider. So, in this case, the client company is concerned with, so, ito yung mga concerns ng client company before entering into a contract. What are these? The quality transition of process, yung kalidad ng transition, or yung um, ga gaano ba kabilis or gaano ba ka-adaptive yung third-party provider when it comes to transition of those processes na gusto mong ipagawa sa kanya. Okay? Siyempre, there will be a transition, especially if the initial pro if the initial setup is dun mo ginagawa yung mga processes na yon within the company itself okay so ngayon nga ipapagawa mo siya sa ibang uh, service provider or sa third party provider outside your company so um legally there should be a smooth transition there should be a smooth transition nung process na yon na ipapagawa mo sa kanya so isang concern yon isa yung isang bagay yon na tinitingnan na tinitingnan ng uh, kliyente based on dun sa pag-hire niya dun sa third 
uh, third party or the service provider. Aside from the uh, transition, tinitingnan din ng kliyente mo or ng kliyente natin yung efficiency ng operation. If initially the, that ano that process is handled yun nga sa in-house, syempre um uh, mas ano yon, mas uh, ma- ma- manage nila ng maganda kasi nga in-house siya. Okay. Now the concern is if this processes will still be as efficient as as it was nung nasa in-house siya or nung ang gumagawa is dun sa loob ng company would it still be as efficient than that you know, as it was nung na dun sa company nung kami mismo ang gumagawa okay so isa din yun sa concern kung ganun pa rin ba siya ka efficient pag ipinabigay ko to sa iba ito ba ay magagawa ng maganda nakagaya nung ginagawa nung nasa company ko pa so yun yung mga concerns ng uh, kliyente mo bago ibigay sa iyo yung trabaho or bago pumirma ng kontrata Now, on the part of the service provider naman, o yung third-party company, <coughs> ito naman yung tinitingnan nila. Ito yung gusto nilang malaman before they enter into a contract or bago nila tanggapin yung trabaho na gusto ng ipagawa sa kanila. The scope of service, syempre mahalaga yan. It should be noted that the scope of service should be indicated dun sa kontrata. Otherwise, baka hindi alam ng service provider kung ano yung gagawin. Okay? So, naka-indicate dapat yan sa kontrata. Another thing, the performance measures. Ano ba yung ginagamit ng company na to para malaman kung, kaano, kung gaano ka-efficient yung service provider na inarkila nila. Okay? And the benchmarks to ensure the objective standards in assessing work quality. So, ganun din. Yung, kung ano man yung benchmark na in, in, kasi every ano every performance measures pag sinabing performance measures these are the ano the measurement or the ways on how can you determine those jobs na kung ginagawa ba or hindi okay so there are different types of measures there could be a, a, a um, survey or evaluation based on the customer it's themselves so those are measurements on how can you um Um, say na maganda yung performance na ginagawa nila. Okay, example nga dun yung mga benchmarking or mga different types of benchmarks na ginagamit ang iba't ibang company to provide them the needed information para malaman nga kung okay yung trabaho na pinagawa nila sa iba. Okay, so therefore, as a result of this relationship attributes, the BPO contract is a unique tailor fit agreement captured in a document that resembles a performance contract. Pag sinabing tailor fitted or pag sinabing tailor fit, it means that the contract is fully adjusted or f- uh, fully modified based on the preferences of the client and not just on the client but also the service provider. Syempre, hindi na naman kasi naka-focus ang kontrata kasi between the two parties, hindi na siya naka-focus doon sa na, doon sa isang party. Okay? It should be a ano, a win-win situation. Parehong makikinabang yung dalawa. Hindi siya win-lose. It should be a win-win situation on both parties. Kung maganda yung mangyayari sa isang party, Therefore, dapat yung mangyayari din sa isang party, maganda din. Walang talo. Otherwise, kung sa tingin mo talo ka, bakit ka pa naman pwede pirma sa kontrata? ba? Diba? So, wala naman sigurong ganun. Okay? So, the next one is the BPO contract. So, what is the definition of the BPO contract or Generally, what is the definition of contract? A business process outsourcing contract is a formal agreement between a client and a service provider to take over a pre-agreed portion of the client's business operation. Okay? So, this is a formal agreement between the two parties on the pre-agreed portion. Pag sinabing pre-agreed portion, meron silang pinagkasunduan na ito yung ipagagawa ko sa'yo. Na ito yung simula ng ating kontrata, ito yung mga scoop of your job na tapagwa ko sa'yo, those are pre-agreed portion. Okay, ngayon, kung uh, sa tingin mo is okay, kung sa tingin ng service provider is okay yung kontrata, and sa tingin naman ng kliyente is okay then then that would be the time na magsisimula na yung trabaho and that would be the time na magkakapirmahan ng kontrata. Once the 
once the signature or the consent of both parties has been given to the contract it automatically means na nag ano ka na nag sub nag ano ka na you 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 already subject to the ano to the uh, proposition nung kung ano man yun sa kontrata na yon nag subject ka na okay so the this pre agreed portion is documented in the contract as the scope of work. Okay, so meron tayo yung scope of work na naka-indicate sa kontrata. And aside from the scope of work, meron din tayong Master Services Agreement. Okay, so dalawa yan. Yung Master Services Agreement class, it's like, a, ano, yun na yung general, kumbaga, yun na yung kabuuan ng kontrata mo. Naka-indicate lahat doon. Including the scope of work. Okay, yung kasi scope of work para siyang kung ano yung gagawin mo, kung ano yung pinapagawa sa'yo nung kliyente mo. Or in other terms, it's a ano um, job order, parang ganon. Another term for scope of work is job order. Okay, so let's take a look what's the meaning of master service agreement. Definition, covering agreement that summarizes terms applicable to every job order with the service provider. Okay, so main elements is services to be provided. The performance management, the issues and issues issues and change management, change management and country loss. If ever na mag-offshoring ka, di ba sabi nga natin, outsourcing is a uh, ano, uh, uh, type of... Uh, uh, getting someone else to do your job na outside located sa company mo. It can be uh, beyond uh, your region or beyond your province or in some cases nga to another country. Okay? If that would be the case, if the outsource uh, company is located abroad, so definitely, meron siyang mga special laws na existing or na hindi existing dun sa bansa na pupuntahan mo. So, dapat alamin mo siya. Like for instance, nag-outsource yung isang company papunta dito sa Philippines. So, syempre, yung um, sweldo na applicable sa Amerika or na legal sa Amerika based on their law is not applicable here in the Philippines. Meron tayong sariling batas. But since dito mo nga siya in-outsource sa Philippines, the, the scope of the job is happening here in the Philippines, syempre, those Filipinos will be paid based on the accordance to the law na meron tayo. Okay, based sa tamang pasahod na naka-indicate naman sa batas yun. So, yun. May difference kasi pag nagpunta ka naman sa ibang bansa, sa Vietnam or sa Thailand, bago din, iba din. So, alamin mo yun as the company that is outsourcing other companies to do the to, uh, to do their job, okay? So, dapat alamin mo siya kung anong bansa yung pumunta. Al alamin mo kung ano yung existing law, especially when it comes to salaries and wages. <clears throat> Definition naman ng scope of work. Describes specific work to be delivered by when at what cost. Okay, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, no? This is similar to a job order. In every um, con contract that you should be signing or that you will be signing, okay? See to it na, or sa lahat ng trabaho, halimbawa, ikaw, may tatanggapin kang trabaho, alamin mo muna yung ano ba yung gagawin ko. Huwag kang makikipagkontrata sa isang, uh, sa isang trabaho or huwag kang, uh, huwag kang magsisimula sa isang trabaho na hindi clear and defined kung ano yung gagawin mo. Otherwise, pag tinagap mo siya at Wala naman sigurong ganon. Ano, everyone naman is ano is in his right mind or in her right mind na alamin kung ano yung scope of the job na gagawin niya before they start the contract. Okay? Another term is generally an attachment addendum to a master's agreement points to covering system. So itong scope of work na to, yung nga sabi ko kanina, the master agreement here the master agreement or master services agreement is the kabuuan of the contract itself and naka-attach dun yung scope of work mo or in the job order itself. Okay? So, ano naman yung core elements ng BPO? So, tingnan natin. 
The services to be rendered are provided as documented in the scope of work. Mahalaga yan. Dapat naka-indicate yan sa isang kontrata. The performance standards expected from the service provider. The service level agreement. And key performance indicator. And the timeline of the contract, start date, or go live and duration. So these are all, these, these elements should all be included sa kontrata ng isang uh, negosyo. Okay, the cost of the client and other specific operational requirements. Yung service level agreement class, it's a parang ano, parang it's an agreement between the client and the service provider. No? Kumbaga, ito yung mga, <coughs> ito yung mga trabaho na napagkasunduan natin na gagawin ko or na ibibigay mo at gagawin ko. Say for instance, tumanggap ako, ako yung service provider, tumanggap ako ng trabaho, from the client na nag-hire sa akin. So, it should be indicated sa contract na meron kaming agreement na these are the jobs na gagawin ko or these are the jobs na ipagagawa mo sa akin. Now, paano naman yung side ng ano ng kliyente? Paano naman, paano naman mapoprotektahan yung side ng kliyente na nagpagawa sa akin? Papasok ngayon dyan yung key performance indicator. Ang ibig sabihin ng key performance indicator, these are the measurement para malaman ng kliyente mo kung nagawa ba yung agreement na pinagkasunduan ninyo. Halimbawa, ang naka-indicate sa contract is um, within uh, three months ay makakapag-accumulate kami ng uh, 1 million sales output. Yun yung agreement, okay? That's the agreement na naka-indicate sa kontrata na pumirma ka. Kasi once you put your signature sa kontrata, ibig sabihin, nag-agree ka sa kasunduan nyo. Okay? Ganon kahalaga yung pirma. Once na may pirma ka dyan, ibig sabihin, nag-agree ka na sa kung ano man nakalagay dyan. Say, for instance, naka-indicate sa contract is 1 million sales output within 3 months. Okay? So, ngayon, para naman ma-protect, kasi syempre, yung kliyente, babayaran ka for the job that they, ano, that they uh, let you do. Parang ganon. Inarkila ka na, babayaran ka nila. Ngayon, para naman ma-protectahan yung kliyente mo na nagbabayad sa'yo at para malaman din yung kliyente mo kung ginagawa mo ba yung trabaho or hindi, ano naman yung kanilang uh, gagamitin. Para, pa, para nga masabi nila na ginagawa nila yung trabaho or ginagawa mo yung trabaho na, pinaga, na pinapagawa sa'yo. Diyan na ngayon papasok yung key performance indicator. Okay, so for every agreement na nag-agree kayo o nag-agree ka, na gagawin mo, nag-promise ka na gagawin mo, nag-promise ka sa kliyente mo na ibibigay ko itong 1 million sales output in 3 months. Okay, that's the agreement. Okay, so what after 3 months, i-evaluate ka ngayon nung kliyente mo using the key performance indicator kung ano yung mga nagawa mo within the 3 months. Kung namit mo ba yung sales quota mo na pinaramis mo na 1 million. Okay? Or kung hindi mo man namit, ilang percentage ang namit mo? Out of the 100% na pinaramis mo, 80% yung namit mo sa so may 20% ka na, kumbaga, hindi mo nagawa. Okay, so gagradean nila yon based on the performance that you did within the three months. Ayon. So yun yung kahalagahan ng service level agreement and key performance indicators na nasa kontrata din. Okay. So timeline of the contract, start date. So kailan siya nagsimula and the duration and cost to the client and other specific operational requirements. Okay, sabi dito, the services to be rendered or provided as documented in scope of work. Example of these are outbound sales costs, inbound inquiries or subscription, delivering food or flowers to the mall or mail. Okay, so these are just example of those scope of work or job orders na gagawin mo. Okay, it can be multiple. Wala kasing job order na isa lang. Napakaswerte ng isang empleyado or napakaswerte ng isang client, ng isang uh, service provider kung isa lang yung naka-indicate na job order. Usually kasi ang isang job order o ang isang scope of work is multiple combination of jobs na gagawin mo within the day. 
Okay. Performance standards expected from the service provider. Yan nga, sabi ko nga, performance standards expected from the service provider. Expected ng kliyente mo na ito yung ibibigay mo sa kanila or the service level agreement and key performance indicator, handle time, average handle time, sales attainment, customer satisfaction rating. These are some of the agreement, okay? These are some of the agreement na pumayag ka, na nakipagkasundo ka sa kliyente mo, okay? So, for them to know naman, edi eh, gagamit naman sila ngayon ng key performance indicator. Namit mo ba yung handle time na sinasabi mo? Yung average, kasi in, in every call class, in every call, example dito sa BPO class, ano, sa BPO or sa, sa mga call centers, okay, meron silang tinatarget na handle time. Hindi ka pwede makapag-telebabad sa isang tawag or sa isang uh, kliyente na tumawag sa iyo. There is a limitation, may limit kung gaano katagal lang supposed to be tum ma makipag-usap sa kliyente. Kasi syempre, every minute or every second na nakipag-usap ka sa kliyente, it generates additional costing, 'di ba? Kuryente. Um, yung oras mo instead na makagawa ka na madami, baka lima lang ang makausap mo sa isang shift. Eh, ang kota mo is labing limang shift. Eh, since nakipag-usap ka na, nakipag-telebabad ka na sa kliyente mo, eh, di umigsi yung oras mo o nabawasan ngayon yung kota mo. Mababawasan din yung kita ngayon ng, ng, uh, ng service provider. Okay? So, meron silang handle time and average handle time na sinasabi. Say, for instance, for every call, the maximum is 10 minutes para i-entertain yung concerns ng kliyente. And aside from that, yung sales attainment. Sabi ko nga kanina, if the agreed party, or if the agreed, uh, if the both party agreed to 1 million sales attainment within 3 months, then you should give that as the service provider kasi yun yung agreement nyo eh. Tsaka pumayag ka sa ganung kasunduan sa kliyente mo. So, ibibigay mo siya. Make sure na ibibigay mo siya. Okay? At doon naman papasok yung key performance indicator. Kung ano yung magin kung, kung if, if in case na hindi mo na meet yung sinasabi mong 1 million, ano yung mga naging lapses? Saan ka nagkaroon ng problema? Okay? Is it the handle time? Is it the way you speak to the customers? So, iba't ibang performance indicator ang ginagamit ng isang company or, or kung dito man sa case ng BPO or ng mga call centers, may iba't iba silang performance indicator. Parang, kumbaga, ano, uh, kumbaga sa Batangas State University, ito yung, ano, evaluation form. ba Sa registrar's office, merong evaluation form. Mer sa accounting office, merong evaluation form. Students evaluation form regarding on how those uh, employees transact to the students. ba? Fulfill up nyo yun? Satisfactory? There, may iba't ibang tanong. So, that's an example of key performance indicator para malaman ng, Batang ng Batangas State University kung saan nagkukulang yung mga empleyado nila or yung opisina nila. Okay, so, example yon. Okay, so yun nga, sabi ko dito, sabi dito, customer satisfaction rating can also be used as a key performance indicator. So, timeline of the contract, naka-detail dapat dyan, okay? Kung kailan ka magsisimula at kung kailan matatapos yung kontrata mo. So, detailed lahat yan sa uh, business contract. Cost to the client refers to the payment made by the client to the service provider for honoring contractual agreements. So, naka-indicate din dyan yung payment na ibabayad sa service provider. Siyempre, naka-indicate. Hindi pwedeng wala. Okay? Huwag kang, kumbaga, if you were the service provider, don't start the, ano, the process or don't start the, ano, the task that was given to you if hindi malinaw yung usapan nyo on how you will be paid. Yun yung pinakamahalaga dyan. Alamin nyo how you, how you will be paid by your client. Okay? Kasi wala namang pumapayag na ipapagawa sa'yo tapos hindi mo alam kung 
ano ba yung ibabayad sa akin or ano ba yung or magkano ba yung kabayaran or kailan ba yung payment every ano ba every 10 or every 15 or every end of the month so those things should be included in the BPO contract titingnan mo kung kasama siya otherwise pag hindi kasama wag kang pipirma so other specific operation who will provide the service qualifications of the personnel okay so, on the part naman ng uh, kliyente, dapat alam nila to. Who will provide the service? Yung qualification ba ng service provider na arkilahin ko? Yung mga tauhan ba do sa service provider na yon? Okay ba silang tumrabaho? Alam ba nila yung gagawin nila? Bihasa ba sila when it comes to accounting transaction? If ever na magpapa-process ako or magpapa-outsource ako ng aking accounting uh, transaction sa third-party provider? Qualified ba sila na gumawa ng accounting transactions ko na yon? The location of operation, the outline of reporting procedures, decision making, escalation of problems. Sino ba yung mga uh, bumubuo ng service provider na yon? Who are the boss? Sino yung mga boss? Sino yung mga manager? If ever na magka problema, sino ba yung pwede uh, ka usapin? Kung magkaroon ng problema sa isang uh, service provider, meron ba silang uh, organization na pwede kong lapitan. Say, for instance, ako yung kliyente. So, lahat ng inaalamin, on the part of the client, aalamin mo dapat kung sino yung mga bumubuo or kung sino yung mga, sabihin natin, uh, ano, officers nung uh, service provider na yon. Okay, so, that concludes the first part of the module 3. Okay? This is the second part of the module 3. Pero, um, wait lang. This will be discussed na lang sa ating synchronous next week. Okay? Ito, ito yung discussion natin, supposed to be discussion natin for this day. But since nagka-problem nga sa internet ko kaninang umaga or kahapon pa pa wala-wala, tapos kaninang umaga, totally wala na, so, kaya nagawa ako ng uh, lecture video for you para hindi tayo mga power, para hindi tayo ma, ano, kasi your exam will be on the 24th, malapit-lapit now. So, we still have one more meeting next week. So, next meeting, I will be finishing module 3 kasi mahaba pa. The remaining of module 3 is, is, lang, is ilang slides pa yon Okay, for the meantime, please listen to the lectures and um, see you next week for the part 2 of module 3. Thank you.